Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com, and today we're talking about different types of micromobility devices and which one is right for you. With everything from e-bikes to e-scooters and e-skateboards and e-unicycles and one wheels and just all the different types of personal electric vehicles out there, it can be tricky to decide which one is the right one for your type of riding. So let's break down the different options and see what the advantages and disadvantages of each are. Now I'm gonna start with electric bicycles, mostly just because they're my favorite. Now the first big advantage of electric bicycles and one of the reasons that they're so popular is that many people find it's the most stable and comfortable platform to ride on. Compared to things like scooters or skateboards where you're standing up, on an electric bicycle, you're in a conventional, familiar bicycle position. You're seated, your center of gravity is lower, and most people just find this to be a more stable position. Electric bicycles are also often faster than other types of electric mobility devices. Now, not all e-bikes are fast, and yes, there are fast scooters and fast skateboards, but generally speaking, e-bikes can get up to around 28 miles per hour, or 45 kilometers per hour, for class three e-bikes in the US, or speed pedal X in Europe. And while you will find other scooters and skateboards that can reach these speeds, it's just not as common. And one of the big reasons for that is the size of the battery. This is another advantage of electric bicycles in that they usually have bigger batteries. Scooters and skateboards are often in the two to 350 watt hour range, whereas electric bicycles usually start at around 500 watt hours and some will go up to 1000 watt hours or more. So when you have those bigger batteries, you can draw more power and run at higher speeds for longer. I also find that for utility purposes, electric bicycles are better for me. That means that I can find more options that are good for hauling cargo, or I can find options that are good for riding with two people, or I can find better commuter options. There's, there's just so many different types of electric bicycles on the market. I mean, at this point, just in the US, there's there must be hundreds, maybe even a thousand different types of e-bikes if you include all of the small and the import companies. So there's just so many different types that when it comes to utility purposes, it's easier to find one that's specifically made for your type of use. You're also more likely to find people that can work on them if you need maintenance. Electric bicycles share most of the same components with normal bicycles, and that means that most bike shops are happy to work on e-bikes. They might not be able to fix your battery for you, but things like brakes and shifters and derailers and handlebars and cables, all these things are common across bicycles. And so it should be easy to do maintenance yourself or find people that will work on them. And the last big advantage of electric bicycles for me is that if the battery ever runs out, I can easily pedal home. With an electric scooter, kicking is not gonna be very much fun, especially if you have to go uphill. And a skateboard, same thing. You can push a lot of them, but it's just a lot harder than it is to pedal an electric bicycle with a dead battery. So there are a lot of advantages with electric bicycles, but things aren't all rosy. Electric bicycles also have their disadvantages. One of the main disadvantages for me with electric bicycles is that they're the least portable option. Most e-bikes are big, they're typical bicycle sized, and that means that it's harder to stow them like on a bus or a train or a subway. There are folding bikes and that makes it easier, but folding bikes also have compromises with smaller wheels that don't roll over obstacles as well. E-bikes are also usually the most expensive option. Now again, there are entry-level e-bikes just like there are entry-level scooters and skateboards and other devices, but generally speaking, on average, e-bikes are going to cost more. Part of that is just that they're bigger. You know, they have uh, larger frames, they have more battery, they often have bigger motors. There's more to them and that results in higher prices. So when you're comparing something that can you know, take you on your commute at 15 miles an hour, you're more likely to find a affordable option in a scooter as compared to an electric bicycle. Doesn't mean there aren't all those advantages to bikes, it's just that they are more expensive to get the same type of speed and basic commuter utility. All right, so that's sort of my breakdown on the advantages and disadvantages of electric bicycles. Now let's move on to electric scooters. For scooters, the main advantage that I found is their portability. Scooters like these are fairly lightweight. This one I think is something like uh, 30, in the low 30 pounds, maybe 35 pounds, something like that. Um, and they're just, they're lighter, they're smaller, they're easy to fold up. This one you just step on a little um, paddle here and the thing folds up in about a second. You can stick it under a bench on a subway or on a train. They're just really convenient to use. For students, you don't have to worry about parking it outside like you would a bike and having someone steal it. You can probably just carry it into class, stick it in the back of the classroom, and no one's gonna bother you about it. 
So just the, the portability and the ease of use of electric scooters is a huge advantage over electric bicycles. For anyone who lives in an apartment or needs to carry their vehicle up a flight of stairs, scooters are also going to be a lot nicer for that. You can carry an e-bike upstairs, but they get to be pretty heavy. Most e-bikes are over 50 pounds. Some of them are a lot heavier than that. And so scooters are just gonna be nicer for anyone who needs to climb stairs. The other big advantage of scooters, for me at least, is that I find them to be a lot of fun. You know, carving down the street and you get that sensation that you don't quite get with a bike. Even on a bike, when you stand on the pedals, you know, it feels different. It gives you this new sensation and it's kind of fun. And that's something you get all the time on a scooter. That being said, there are still disadvantages to scooters. One of the main disadvantages to an electric scooter for me is the smaller wheel size. Compared to a bike that can easily roll over obstacles, scooters have smaller wheels and you're more likely to get hung up on obstacles, which can be dangerous. They're also generally lower power and have lower ranges than electric bicycles for the same reasons we've talked about. They have smaller motors, smaller batteries. It just translates into a bit lower performance. Now that's not across the board. I've ridden high power electric scooters that have thousands of watts and go 40 or 50 miles per hour. So those options are out there but on average scooters are generally going to have lower ranges, smaller motors, and smaller batteries than electric bicycles. In my opinion, the type of commuter that will be best served by an electric scooter is someone who really wants that portability and that's a big factor for them. Someone who doesn't want to deal with a big electric bicycle, doesn't want to have to store something that big or always be worrying about locking it outside and, and dealing with issues of theft and vandalism and that sort of thing. The ability to just take your scooter inside with you is a big plus and if they can go similar speeds to a lot of e-bikes, then that's enough for a lot of people. All right, now let's move on to electric skateboards. In my opinion, electric skateboards are the most fun option. I ride everything. I have e-bikes, scooters, skateboards, you name it, but I don't get the same kind of rush or thrill on anything else as I get on my electric skateboards. They're just a ton of fun. Being able to effectively surf down the road and carve through every turn and you just, you get that thrill with each ride. It's, it's kind of like when I hop on my motorcycles and you just, even a, a basic trip like running to the grocery store turns into a really fun trip. It's the same kind of idea with a skateboard. It just turns boring trips into fun little mini adventures. And to me, that is a huge advantage of electric skateboards is that they just bring that excitement into every commute. Also, similar to electric scooters, electric skateboards are very small and portable. In fact, they're probably more portable than electric scooters because they usually weigh less and they even take up less room than a folded scooter. When it comes to going to a restaurant or something, I'll, I'll often take my electric skateboards just because I know when I get there, I can shove it under my chair and it takes up almost no space. So that's another huge advantage to skateboards is that you've got a powerful, potent electric vehicle in the size of something that literally just fits under your feet. You can carry around under your arm. Now there are important disadvantages of electric skateboards, the main one being that they are simply more dangerous than the other options I've talked about. They are inherently less stable. They have smaller wheels, which have difficulty climbing over even small obstacles. And they're just, they're a more dangerous option. Now, there are people out there that'll say, no, you know, it depends on what you're used to riding, how you ride, you take that risk in your hands, etc. That's That's fine, but Inherently, these are more dangerous vehicles, and I know that getting on mine, I still ride them, but I know that when I hop on a skateboard, I need to be hyper vigilant. I know that my stopping distance isn't as good, so I need to be anticipating things more. I'm uh, always looking for little imperfections in the road or cracks or, you know, even a stick or something that I wouldn't even notice on a bike, but could be a big problem for small skateboard wheels. It's just an entirely different animal, and it's something that you have to think about when you're riding electric skateboards. Now, I, I still ride them, mostly for the advantage of that they're just so much fun and I really enjoy them, but it is an important consideration if you're looking at different personal electric vehicles that skateboards are inherently more dangerous. To me, I think that electric skateboards are best for people who prize that extreme portability, who like that fun and adventure of riding, and perhaps people who have a good sense of balance, are a little more athletic than average, and are comfortable with sort of using your entire body as a control mechanism. This is a different type of riding than scooters or electric bikes or, or anything else. And so if you're not familiar at all with electric skateboards, I even wouldn't recommend hopping on one as your first skateboard experience. When I first wanted to get into electric skateboards, I actually bought a longboard first, just a normal 
a non-electric longboard for a few weeks of practice because I didn't grow up skating and I don't have all of that experience and the muscle memory that people who grew up on skateboards have. So I don't recommend hopping on one of these for your first vehicle the way I would for a scooter or an e-bike, which is just a much more intuitive vehicle. Electric skateboards are a different beast entirely. So if you're gonna start there, I recommend starting on a manual non-electric skateboard or longboard first, but these can still be a very good option for someone who's looking for a personal electric vehicle. They're tons of fun, they're super portable, and it's just, it's a great option if you don't mind taking on that extra risk. So of all of the vehicles out there, I think electric bikes, electric scooters, and electric skateboards probably account for 99% of the micro mobility market. There are some other options. Um, there are one wheels, which I would mostly lump into the electric skateboard category, though anyone who rides a one wheel will probably hotly protest that. Um, they're very similar in terms of all the advantages and disadvantages I listed, with the exception of, I would say they're a bit safer because they can roll over larger obstacles with that bigger wheel. Uh, there are also electric unicycles, which, man, if electric skateboards are their own beast, then electric unicycles are like in a completely different kingdom. They're just, they're totally their own thing. Um, I have, of all these types of vehicles, I have the least amount of experience on electric unicycles. I had one for like two weeks that I borrowed from InMotion. It was a um, Glide 3 or a V8, I think it's called. It took me a couple days of practice so I could actually ride the thing, and then by the end of the two weeks, I felt pretty comfortable on it, but still, uh, these are really meant for someone who has a good sense of balance and is definitely uh, displays more athleticism than the average person and uh, wants to put in the, the hours that it takes to get good at something like this. They're a lot of fun once you get it. Uh, it's another option that's really portable. In some ways, it's nicer than a skateboard even because it's like the size of a briefcase. It's not even that long. And you can just you know, pick it up and carry it around like a briefcase. They also have the larger wheel that can roll over bigger things. You know, a two by four isn't gonna be that bad for an electric unicycle, whereas it could be catastrophic for an electric skateboard. So electric unicycles are another option, but they probably take the longest of all of these types of vehicles to learn, and they might not be the best beginner option. So that's sort of how I feel about all of the uh, different personal electric vehicle options. My favorite would probably be electric bicycles, though I'm sure I am biased because I spend most of my time on them. After that, scooters and uh, skateboards are a lot of fun and they give more of a thrill, especially skateboards. But when you go with electric skateboard, you really have to think about the added danger that is inherent in those vehicles and make that part of your calculation. And then when it comes to sort of um, oddball things like uh, one wheels and electric unicycles, definitely they're a lot of fun, but um, they're a little bit different. You're, you're just in a different class with those vehicles and you're gonna have to dedicate some time to learning how to ride a balancing type uh, vehicle like that. All right, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, everyone. Last but not least, it is time to announce the winner of a free book from my last video. You can choose either from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, the Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or Electric Motorcycles. And the randomly selected commenter is... Tech Guy. So congratulations. Just let me know which one of my books you'd like and where to send it. Uh, I wish I could help you with your question about uh, the best inverter and BMSs. It's a really tricky question without knowing any specifics about the project you're trying to run. So maybe shoot me some details and uh, let me know more about your project and I'll try to give a recommendation. For everybody else, thanks for watching. Make sure you put a comment down below if you want a chance to win one of my books for free at the end of my next video. And I'll see you next time.